Hello friends, this video on chemistry in everyday life part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next type of drug is antimicrobial drugs. Right? And there are two different types. One is the antiseptic, antibiotics and the next is antiseptics. And also disinfectants that are used to clean the inmate object. So there are three actually you see. The antibiotics antiseptics and disinfectants they are antimicrobial drugs so as the name suggests antimicrobes that means they will kill the microbes that will make you sick correct so they'll kill the microbes actually and it is at one more level below right it will kill the microbe itself that will make you sick Right? So if you see the disease we, in which we get in the humans or animals, they are caused by a lot of microbes, microorganisms. For example, bacteria, or it can be virus, and it can be fungi. HIV we know is caused by virus. So there are so many uh, microorganisms which will make you sick. So these antimicrobial drugs will destroy or will inhibit the action of this microbes right so since there are different kind of microbes so we have bacteria so we'll call it antibacterial drug we'll not discuss in detail but just the names for, for the virus it will be antiviral drug for fungi it is anti fungal drug. Right? Similarly, if it is for parasites, it's called anti parasitic drug. You can have parasites also. This can be parasites also. Right? So, they are different drugs. So, let's start and understand antibiotics first. So the name suggests antibiotics. If you see anti means opposite, biotics means life. Right? It is against the life of microorganism. Life of not the people, but the microorganism, which is making you sick. Right? And that's why the name came antibiotics. That inhibit the growth of microorganisms. See earlier, if you see earlier, long long back, these antibiotics were prepared by microorganism itself. These antibiotics were prepared from microorganism itself. So antibiotic, let me write here. Antibiotics were prepared from prepared from microorganism. Like bacteria or fungi, right? And these antibiotics used to inhibit the growth of microns. But then the synthetic methods were developed, right? Then they the it is older. Now synthetic methods were developed. Developed to prepare these antibiotics in the lab. So the new definition came for the antibiotic. The new definition is any substance produced wholly or partially by chemical synthesis which in low concentration inhibits the growth or destroys microorganisms by intervening with their metabolic processes are called antibiotics. It may be substance produced wholly or partially by chemical synthesis which on low concentration inhibits the growth or destroys so there are some critical terms here uh, that is produced by chemical synthesis only or partially second is it will inhibit growth of Microorganism. Right? How they do that? By intervening with the metabolic activity. Metabolic 
with their metabolic process. Right? These kind of chemicals are called antibiotics. Okay. Let's understand the history of antibiotics. See, it was known to the chemists or doctors that there is something called bacteria or, or microorganism which makes humans sick. Right? So there was a need for the chemical which will kill this host, the bacteria, but will not impact uh, the host. It will kill the bacteria, but will not impact the host that is human. The search began in the 19th century, it's 1800s hot. Right? And then this guy Paul, Paul Ehrlich, he was a German bacteriologist, he came with the idea. What he was doing is he was investigating a lot of arsenic based product, arsenic based drugs you can say, why to cure syphilis in less toxic way actually. So he wanted to create a less toxic medicine for syphilis. For example, if you see the current medicine for the cancer, cure for cancer is very toxic. The whole chemotherapy process is very toxic, right? Similarly, that time the syphilis treatment was also very toxic and he wanted to create a less toxic way for that. So he developed a medicine called asphenamine, A-R-R-C, R's from E. It came from arsenic, ars, arsphenamine, right? Also called salversum. This was the medicine he created. And he also got Nobel Prize in 1908. Nobel Prize of Medicine for his work. Because it became the first effective treatment of syphilis. So this particular compound, salvasim or arsphenamine, this was toxic, little, little toxic to human, but it was more toxic to this bacteria. But still it was not uh, very comfortable for this human. It was little toxic to this human. But still it was better than the earlier approaches we had to, to cure syphilis. At the same time, the same guy Paul was also working on the azodyes. And what we found out that the structure of azodyes, azodyes was similar to salversum. So if you see in azodye, this was the AS AS linkage, arsenic arsenic linkage he had in salversum, and in azodye he has this nitrogen nitrogen linkage. You know arsenic is poisonous. So with this, he also found that some tissues get colored by this dye selectively right so uh, selective tissue coloring that is what he found so with that he had a hope that he can found a better compound that can replace the salvation and that is non toxic to human but toxic to bacteria right so he began his search for the compound that is similar to as a dye but it can bind to this bacteria. This bacteria is something which has to be killed. So in 1932, he succeeded. He prepared one effective antibacterial agent and he called as protonsil. It's a very effective antibacterial agent which resembles to the earlier compound salversin. It was non-toxic. Correct. This was a compound which was discovered and this, this became very famous to cure uh, uh, syphilis. But again, soon after more and more research, it was discovered that the human body will take this potential and it, it will actually, this potential will be taken by the human body and it will convert this potential actually to a compound called sulfonolamide. 
that is the real active compound which is playing the major role and that's why instead of giving protons in the body creating the sulfur drug why not give sulfur drug itself so thus all the sulfur drugs were born A lot of sulfur drugs were created after this right for example sulfa pyridine is one sulfur drug but the real revolution in the case of antibiotics came in 1929 So what happened in 1929 is this guy Alexander Fleming. This guy is Fleming. Alexander Fleming. Yeah. This guy he founded antibacterial property of penicillin fungus. So he he took one penicillin fungus. Penicillin fungus. and he found it antibacterial property of this it took some time it took almost 13 years for the clinical trials and a lot of things to happen before the drug came into market but he found that this fungus has antibacterial property and in fact he got a nobel prize for this 1945 in fact he shared this prize with uh, flore because both did the independent work on the same uh, uh, penicillin right so that is all the history of antibiotics started with this guy paul he he developed a uh, uh, medicine for the syphilis and then found he found that the sulfur dry di- drugs are the one which are more effective finally and then this uh, alexander found that penicillium fungus they have this antibacterial property Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attend free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.